it's time to to begin the next talk. So the next speaker is Professor Wilfred Gangbo from UCLA. Uh, Professor Gangbo uh, got uh, his PhD from Ecole, Nor Ecole Normale, Ecole Polytechnique Federal de Lausanne, EPFL, in 1992 in Switzerland under the direction of uh, Bernard da Coronia. Uh, he held a couple of postdoctoral positions at CMU at MSRI at Berkeley. Um, and then since 1995 uh, until 2016, he was a professor at uh, Georgia Tech, where uh, we were colleagues for 21 years. And since 2016, he's a professor at, uh, at UCLA. Uh, the main interests of uh, Professor Gangbo are uh, nonlinear analysis, calculus of variations, and PDEs. Uh, he is best known for his uh, fundamental contributions in the theory of mass transport, uh, more recently in uh, the theory of mean field games. And um, uh, well, among his many honors and distinctions, uh, let me just mention that he is the member of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. He is the fellow of the AMS, uh, a fellow of the Pan-African uh, Scientific Research Council. Uh, Professor Gangbo gave uh, numerous uh, plenary distinguished uh, talks and lecture series, uh, uh, among them two at previous uh, AMS or joint mathematics meetings. And um, well, finally, on, on a personal note, let me just say that, you know, Wilfred is a good friend of mine. We had a successful collaboration for many years, so it's a, a real honor for me to, to introduce him uh, here today. And um, well, on that note, uh, well, without further ado, let's uh, welcome uh, Professor Gangbo. He will give a talk today about uh, recent progress on master equations in mean field games. So, Wilfred. Thank you. Yeah, so it is uh, a real, real pleasure to be here. It is an honor to give this talk. And uh, I would like to thank um, uh, AMS for inviting me. So my talk is going to be divided into two parts. Um, I will try not to be technical for the, a good amount of time. I am going to start with a game which are played by N players, finitely many players. And uh, the natural intuition, when you have um, a system of equation to solve, uh, we, we tell ourselves, uh, maybe let us start with few equation, and we, if we understand that, that will help us understand something more general. But here, game of N players, are more difficult to solve than game of infinitely many players. And uh, I am going to comment more on that in a uh, few minutes. And this fact has already, already been noticed by uh, economist Nobel Prize uh, winner, Roberta Amman. He wrote a book which he entitled Non-Atomic Game. And the non-atomic game means that uh, the distribution which represents the player, if you apply the measure to any point, any point has measure zero. Another way of saying that is uh, you have a game where one single player cannot influence the outcome of the game. This may look very abstract. But if you look at an approximation of it, for instance, uh, the election in a country uh, like the US where more than uh, 100 million people vote, in theory, it is true that uh, one player can uh, affect the result of the vote. But uh, in reality, that is very unlikely that one player affect uh, the result of the vote. 
And so what we are going to look is uh, a limiting case, which sometimes may help uh, understand uh, how much we can say about game, which consists of uh, finitely many players. I am going to highlight uh, the role of uh, optimal transportation in uh, uh, our study. And in fact, uh, this, is, this was one of the main uh, motivation uh, why I start uh, looking at equation appearing in a uh, mean field game. I would also like to emphasize that uh, it happens sometime in PD when you are st studying time dependent PD. Existence of solution for a short time is uh, not a big deal. Usually you can apply a fixed point argument and uh, be able to get uh, existence of solution for a short time. What is difficult is uh, to have a long time existence result. So I give you an arbitrary interval, time interval zero t, and I ask you if uh, you can find uh, a unique solution to your evolutive PD. So when you are infinite dimension, you have to be more careful about uh, the kind of estimate which uh, uh, you can use. If you write estimate for finitely many particles and you let uh, the number of particles go to infinity, if the constant appearing in your estimate go to infinity, you may lose uh, everything you have uh, worked for. So I am going to denote by, uh, I am going to use uh, often this uh, notation. The set of probability measure on RD, which has a bounded second moment. I am going to denote it by P2 of RD. And uh, I am rewriting half of what I said. The total mass of the measure will be one. And if you integrate uh, any quadratic form, you get uh, a finite number. So the data, the most one of the most important thing is uh, the time interval, which uh, is given. The game will be played between time interval zero t. Uh, Sometimes you can give yourself an initial condition, time equal to zero, and you look at how the game evolves over time. Or you can give yourself uh, a terminal condition, and uh, you solve a backward uh, equation. In the case of deterministic game, these are equivalent because you can write a change of uh, variable. In the case of uh, stochastic uh, game, one is, has to be more careful about uh, the direction, time direction in which uh, we are studying the equation. So we are given, we are given L. We are given L. This will be called uh, a Lagrangian or a running cost. Actually, it is playing, it, it is going to dictate how the game is going to evolve if the game was deterministic, if we didn't have any randomness. And uh, L depends on Q, the position of one player. Mu will represent the distribution of all players. And uh, V, which represents uh, the velocity of uh, a player. And very naturally, we are going to introduce uh, a Hamiltonian. So I am using terminology which appear in uh, uh, dynamical system mechanics because there is a lot of similarity between uh, game theory and uh, classical mechanic. So the Hamiltonian is uh, given by the Legend transform of you fix the position, you fix the distribution, and you compute the Legend transform at uh, negative the momentum, simply for the reason you use negative P because I am going to be talking about uh, a backward uh, equation instead of uh, a forward uh, equation. You can divide our study into two categories. 
The first category, all the players have a deterministic trajectory. We can study a second case where all the players have a stochastic trajectory. So, in other words, I am saying that half of the player cannot have deterministic trajectory and half of them will have a, a stochastic trajectory. To handle the latter case, the case where we have a stochastic trajectory, I am going to assume that uh, I am given a probability space. I am given a probability space uh, omega p and a sigma algebra f, which is, uh, you can think of the set which are measurable with respect to the probability space. Let me start with some uh, definition which may be elementary for many of you. When I say that x is a random variable, I am talking about a vector field from omega to rv, such that the pre-image of any open set is measurable with respect to the probability p. And so, once I give myself a set omega and I give a measure on it, I can push the measure forward from omega to rv and define a new measure in the following way. When you give me any set in rv and I want to compute the, the measure, which I call calligraph L subscript x of O, it will be the probability of uh, the pre-image of O. So I, actually, I'm not very used to, to giving talk uh, without writing on blackboard, and I, I feel a little bit lost. Okay, so in a realistic game, player cannot maximize their profits or minimize their loss. So think about uh, a uh, gas station, for instance. You have uh, um, a bunch of gas station in, a, in uh, a city. One gas station cannot determine a strategy to maximize uh, his profit because uh, when the gas station make a decision, the other gas station are going to react to it. When they react to it, he or she will have to adjust his uh, decision. And whenever he does that, people react, everybody reacts to everybody's decision. So what is more realistic and was introduced by Nash is uh, a Nash equilibrium, which I am going to define uh, mathematically in a few minutes. But I would like to emphasize that uh, Nash equilibrium are harder to find or simply don't exist in the following case. If you have a game with finitely many players, they may not exist. And again, I want to emphasize that I am thinking about a global existence, not local existence. In deterministic game, they are expected to be harder to find than in stochastic game. So player I is free to make a decision. Player I can choose uh, a control. So let me do first the deterministic case. What I mean by a control mathematically is a vector field which depends on the time, on the position of all player, and we take value in RV. So once uh, player I make, uh, choose its control, its trajectory will be completely determined by its initial condition and uh, the control. So I am claiming that uh, this equation has a unique solution. And of course, I need to make some assumption on alpha i to get uniqueness, but I am going to keep the sharpest assumption. For instance, uh, alpha 
I, uh, leaf sheaths uh, will, uh, will do. The situation is a little bit uh, more subtle when you are, want to talk about uh, uh, stochastic uh, game. In stochastic game, the control alpha depends on the time. It depends on the stochastic variable. It depends on the position of all the players, and it takes value in uh, Rd. In the next few lines, I am going to use some terminology. If you are not comfortable with them, you can ignore them and just focus on deterministic game. Here is the description for stochastic game. I assume that uh, I am given n plus one identically, independently distributed standard Brownian motion. I have n player, but I am given n plus one Brownian motion. One of the Brownian motion, which I am going to call B naught, will be common to all the player. Another way to see it is uh, if you have some, someone like an institution which is making decision in a random way, you can identify B naught, the first Brownian motion, be something which is controlled randomly by the institution. And then uh, each player will have uh, an independent noise, B1 to Bn. And uh, I am going to assume that uh, my control alpha i has uh, some uh, measurability condition with respect to all the data. So this is uh, the so-called adapted, which I am not going to specify here. So the assumption below is uh, technical. It is just condition I need to impose to make sure that uh, this stochastic differential equation has a unique solution. You can rewrite this differently. You can write uh, xi, the trajectory of player i, to be a fixed point to this uh, equation. So I have a system of uh, an equation, and for each player, I have a trajectory. And inside the integral here, I have uh, s, which is the trajectory of uh, all the players. It is very convenient. I am going to record uh, all the control in a vector field. And whenever I fix a player i, I am going to remove a player i from the group and write the distribution of all the other player. What is contained here, this description is saying that uh, when player i look at uh, the other player, it doesn't distinguish them. So if you, you replace uh, sj1 by sj2 in this sum, it will not going to affect uh, at all uh, this uh, measure. The payoff of player i is uh, given as follow. You look at uh, the value function at the terminal time, you apply it to the position at terminal time, you apply it to the distribution of uh, all the other player at time capital T, and then you add to that what uh, came from the running cost. So this is an element of RD. This is uh, a distribution, a probability measure. This is your control. In the deterministic case, I am going to remove the expectation, which is uh, an integral with respect to omega. But uh, in uh, general, in the stochastic case, I am going to integrate uh, with respect to omega. So here is what uh, you call a Nash equilibrium. You call the vector field alpha bar a Nash equilibrium if 
for every player I and every control. So I am going to fix the player, and I am going to let the player change his mind or her mind, while all the other player keep the same control. And I am going to compare what is the cost if everybody stick to the original decision compared to the cost which player I is going to pay if everybody stick to the original decision except player I himself or herself change decision. In case a Nash equilibrium exists and is unique, it makes sense to define this functional. So here I was integrating from zero to capital T. I can also integrate from little t to capital T because if I, have, if I find an equilibrium, a Nash equilibrium from time zero to capital T, it will also be a Nash equilibrium from time little t to time capital T. So once you define this function, you want to check what is the equation satisfied by this function. So it is well understood that one can solve a system of PD, and if this system of PD admit a smooth solution, then one has a unique Nash equilibrium. So I am going to be looking for a known function, ui, which are defined on the time interval 0t, rd to the n, and they take real value function. So before I write the system of equation, which I want the ui to satisfy, I want to introduce uh, this uh, object, which in fact uh, is uh, the velocity, will be the velocity of the player if uh, we were in a deterministic case. It is just convenient to write it uh, this way. So here is the system of uh, PD you want to solve. You differentiate with respect to time. You have this uh, uh, complicated term. I am not going to insist on it now. It is easier to understand it in the infinite dimensional case, so I am more going to talk about it in the infinite dimensional case. You have your Hamiltonian, which depends on the position of player i, the distribution of all the other player in a symmetric way, and the gradient of the value function of uh, player i. And uh, here, you add the Laplacian, multiplied by uh, uh, beta square. This came from uh, uh, Ito uh, formula. If any of you, if those who are uh, familiar with uh, Ito formula, when the, you go back to the differential equation I uh, wrote with uh, the common noise and the individual noise, the correct coefficient to appear in front of the Laplacian is beta square. And uh, here, you have uh, the trace of some missed derivative, which you sum up, and this comes from the common noise. So the common noise has a geometric meaning. The common noise is a partial Laplacian. I am not going to try to show that uh, here. The individual noise, I am not aware of uh, any geometric meaning, and in fact, this is uh, one of the difficulty we face uh, when we want to show approximation of uh, discrete equation with uh, individual noise and let the number of particles go to infinity because we don't know the geometric meaning of this. We are not uh, able to express data in a term of a Hilbert setting. So the terminal condition is uh, ui I time t is given by g. 
it depends on player SI, and then it depends on the distribution of the over player in uh, a symmetric way. So I want to make uh, a brief comment why um, game with finitely many players is uh, harder to solve than game with uh, infinitely many players. If I make the substitution, so here, if instead of excluding player i from this distribution, if I substitute this distribution by that distribution there, I get a new system of equation. This system, unfortunately, doesn't correspond to any game. It is easier to solve. And so this explains to you when these two objects are equal when n equal to plus infinity, one over n minus one equal to one over n. So you can say you don't know much about uh, the master equation, but you know why it is difficult. It is difficult because one over n is not one over n minus one. So when I make this substitution, I get my new system, I solve it in the finite dimensional case as well as in the infinite dimensional case. But uh, when I solve this easier problem in the infinite dimensional case, it still corresponds to a game. And so this is how we prove that uh, we have uh, a Nash equilibrium. So we, are, we will try to move away from a game which consists of a finitely many players to a game which consists of infinitely many players. One can derive the master equation in several ways. I am not going to try to derive the master equation here. I am just going to try to identify the discrete operator which appear, what, what is the correspondence of this uh, infinite what is the infinite dimensional counterpart? And I am going to write the infinite dimensional counterpart and get uh, the master equation that way. What is important to note is uh, you see that at time capital T, the function has uh, a very special structure. It depends on one player, and it is symmetric with respect to all other players. So I want to write an infinite dimensional version which will preserve a data structure. So I am going to replace i. i was a player i, which, who is between 1 and n. I am going to replace it by q in Rd. You can take q in Rd. You can take q in r. You can take a q in uh, any measure space which doesn't have an atom. But it is convenient uh, here. Uh, to take a Q in uh, Rd. We are going to replace this average by uh, a probability measure with a finite second moment. So having done these two, it is very natural that uh, the value function Ui applied to T, Si, will be replaced by uh, U apply to t, q, and uh, mu, the distribution. We have to be more careful about uh, how do we interpret uh, this uh, Laplacian when n go to infinity. How do we interpret uh, this uh, miss stress when n go to infinity? And uh, how do we interpret uh, this uh, last complicated expression, which uh, I did not comment uh, a lot on. We are going to rely on the theory of optimal transportation when uh, n uh, tend to infinity. So when you look at uh, Rd is a set of, uh, the set of probability measure, you, you, 
you send a point to a Dirac mass. So when you take Rd cross Rd n, n time, and you quotient that by the set of permutation, you get uh, a subset of the set of probability measure. And uh, when you let uh, n go to infinity, you can show that any measure is, can be approximated by average of Dirac masses. Therefore, you hope that uh, the geometry which you have on uh, Rd cross itself uh, n time, you, show, you hope that this geometry will be preserved. Unfortunately, this geometry is preserved. There are several ways to see that. There is an approach which, is, uh, which was introduced by uh, Ambrosio, Gigli, and Savary. But uh, there is also a Hilbertian approach, which uh, is what I am going to uh, present uh, here. In the optimal transport community, the approach uh, introduced by Ambrosio, Gigli, Savary is what is uh, often used. We want to have uh, a useful concept of monotonicity for PD on the set of probability measure. So here is the reason. When you look at Hamilton Jacobi on finite dimensional space, you don't have smooth solution for a long time because uh, characteristic cross, characteristic may cross. So when you have infinitely many particle, the situation will get uh, way more complicated. And so you cannot hope to have a smooth solution in general. You need to introduce a concept of, uh, some concept of uh, monotonicity. There is a concept which has been introduced by uh, Lassery and Lyon, which people refer to Lassery Lyon monotonicity condition. And uh, we propose a new concept which we refer to as a displacement monotonicity because uh, it came, uh, it was inspired by the definition of uh, my uh, collaborator, Robert Mackin, who proposed uh, displacement convexity. I am going to say more about uh, this in a few minutes. So assume that you have a function f from the set of probability to r. I want to give a meaning. What does it mean to differentiate the function with respect to the mu variable, where mu is the, my probability measure? Many people, at least me, I am more comfortable working on flat space than working on third, uh, curve space. And fortunately here, you can do that. Introduce the following Hilbert space. This is the, the set of uh, square measurable vector field on the interval 0, 1 to the d. Again, 0, 1 to the d doesn't matter. You can replace this by uh, any uh, set of uh, measure 1 and use a probability measure here which has no atom. So we are going to work on this Hilbert space rather than that. And uh, if you give me a function f on this uh, set, I am going to lift it on uh, h. I am using the terminology lift it because I can show that uh, this, uh, the set of probability measure is a quotient space of this Hilbert space. So by definition, when I want to define f hat, for a random variable, which means an element of this uh, Hilbert space, I am going to compute the push forward of the probability measure, apply f to that, and uh, I define my f hat on my Hilbert space. Traditionally, f is called convex or L2 convex if it is convex uh, along a uh, this kind of trajectory. So you take two probability measures, you interpolate between them, and uh, this is uh, how you, what correspond to your path in the set of probability measure. And convexity of a function mean convexity along uh, this path. And uh, the L2 differential will be monotone. Following a definition by Mackin in uh, 1994, 
we say that f is displacement convex if f hat is convex. So the reason is that uh, x represents the displacement in Eulerian coordinate, which uh, describe a uh, uh, mu, which represent uh, the distribution in, uh, sorry, s uh, the, is in Lagrangian coordinate and uh, mu is in the uh, Eulerian coordinate. And so this is uh, the definition you take for co convexity. This make uh, the gradient monotone in uh, a way many people are familiar with, but we are going to use the following definition. We say that, uh, I missed something. We say that uh, F is a displacement monotone if uh, F hat uh, is, uh, is convex. Now, I have my notion of monotonicity, at least part of it. And uh, next, I want to go to the definition of uh, the gradient. If we were on a Hilbert space, when you want to define the gradient of a function, f hat at uh, x, you write Taylor expansion. You write a linear approximation. And uh, you call uh, uh, zeta, you call it the gradient of uh, f hat at x. With uh, to the right school, we prove the following. Assume that uh, x and s bar are random variable, and assume that they push forward uh, the Lebesgue measure to the same measure. f hat is differentiable at s if and only if uh, f hat is differentiable at s bar. In this case, there exists a Borel field, psi, such that you can have the factorization. The Hilbert gradient can be written as a composition of psi and uh, x. In fact, uh, we get uh, a stronger result, which is what is useful when you are studying viscosity solution. We get the same result when you are talking about sub-differential. You take the sub-differential and you look at the element of minimal norm. And then we are stating that if you look at the element of minimal norm, you can uh, factorize the element of minimal norm this way. And in particular, if uh, the function is differentiable, you, can, you have the result. So we are going to call uh, uh, psi the Wasserstein gradient of uh, f at mu. This definition coincides with uh, the definition of Ambrosio Giglin Savary. If you are not uh, familiar with the definition of Ambrosio Giglin Savary, you can take this as a definition. But if you are familiar with it, uh, um, I am saying that uh, both definitions, one can show that they are equivalent. So here is a very useful property. You want to check the chain rule. Right. The chain rule is a trivial to check uh, if you are on the Hilbert space. So you write x dot multiplied by the gradient of f hat at x. Assume that uh, x describe the evolution in a uh, Lagrangian coordinate and v, the vector field, uh, the velocity in a uh, Eulerian coordinate. Then uh, x dot and v are given by this relation. I put a negative uh, in front of uh, v because uh, I am uh, going uh, backward uh, in time. So when I write s dot multiplied by the gradient of f hat at x, I just replace s dot by what it is. And I use the change of variable to make s disappear to get that it is v multiplied by the Wasserstein gradient of f. And so the chain rule which you have uh, on the Hilbert space, you have exactly the same chain rule on the set of probability measure. So I just want to recall that uh, you should think of uh, f, the gradient of f at mu is a vector field. Similarly, you can define uh, the second gradient of f and that will be 
a matrix. I am not going to, to prove that, but one check that uh, the analog of uh, this when uh, n goes to infinity is uh, you compute the Laplacian with respect to Q, you compute the Wasserstein gradient, you apply the divergence to it, and you integrate. You get what uh, is called in a uh, mean field game the individual noise uh, operator. I'll have introduced it differently if I have more time. I'll have proven to you that uh, the common noise operator is a partial Laplacian. It is a geometric object which has uh, two terms, one which has a smoothing effect and one which destroys smoothness. This one, the individual noise uh, um, creates smoothness and there is a second part which uh, destroys smoothness. The analog of uh, this uh, mistress is uh, what uh, the partial Laplacian, which is uh, called the common noise operator. It is the individual noise, this is what I was telling you, plus uh, some expression which uh, is going to destroy um, uh, regularity. Finally, the analog of uh, V is uh, given by that. For those who are familiar with Hamilton-Jacobi equation, they will not be surprised at all to see that uh, this is the vector field uh, which appear. And uh, I wrote a discrete version of uh, that, which is uh, harder to see in the discrete case. Here is uh, the so-called uh, master equation. You want to find uh, a scalar function which depends on the time variable, the position variable, the distribution. It satisfies the following, the partial derivation, derivative with respect to time, equal to a second order operator with a coefficient beta in front of it, a second order operator with a coefficient beta not in front of it, and the Hamiltonian. And uh, here you subtract uh, this expression with a negative sign. What is hidden here is in fact, uh, this is uh, a directional derivative and that will be crucial when you are trying to prove a uh, smoothness property of uh, the master equation. Because you can show that first, you can reduce uh, the infinite dimensional Hamilton-Jacobi equation to a finite dimensional Hamilton-Jacobi equation, a battle which we know a lot. So the master equation is too hard to study in general. Pro progress has been made only on the appropriate uh, monotonicity condition on the data. So I am going to skip uh, this and go directly here. I should have defined what uh, it means that a function is uh, monotone, a function depending on the variable uh, Q and mu. You give me this function. I am going to define uh, a differential operator. I am going to define a bilinear from, from L2, L2 to R, given by this explicit uh, expression. I differentiate with respect to Q twice. I differentiate with respect to mu and Q, and I combine this expression the following way. I am going fast now because uh, I want to cover uh, most of my material. One can show that uh, this expression is uh, greater than zero if and only if the gradient of f is monotone in the sense of which I defined before, which means f uh, is uh, displacement monotone. This definition of displacement monotonicity, which has been given for function depending on q and mu, we are studied to function depending on uh, three variables. And in that case, we have to use uh, a test function phi, which is of class uh, C1. So if you go back 
to if you go back to the uh, this expression to this expression you see that the scaling in Q and the mu is not the same. So if you write a convolution of mu with uh, a Gaussian circuit data, you let a mu tend to a Dirac mass, you can uh, show that uh, displacement monotonicity implies that uh, you have a uh, convexity with respect to Q variable. So for someone doing analysis PD, once uh, you get convexity, this looks like a very good news because it is going to facilitate your future a lot. So it will be a tremendous gain of, gain of regularity if we can show that displacement monotonicity at time capital T is preserved at uh, all time. And uh, let me give you a result when the result is true for every beta. Um, let me move, uh, do the following. I am going to make a description when beta equal to zero. Assume that uh, I have uh, a smooth solution to the master equation because we want to do a priori estimate. So let us assume that uh, we have a smooth solution. And let me define uh, my path uh, mu to be the path given by this velocity vector field. Set capital U to be U of T Q to be little U of T Q sigma T. And uh, differentiate capital U with respect to time. This uh, strange-looking term, the non-local non term, you see that uh, when you differentiate u with respect to time, you get the derivative of u with respect to time minus the, this non-local term. The gradient of uh, capital U with respect to q is the same thing as the gradient of uh, little u with respect to q. And so you see that uh, you satisfy, capital U satisfy this finite dimension of Hamilton Jacobi equation. We know this is a, a very extremely well understood uh, equation. And so from here, if I have convexity, I get a lot of regularity for free in the space and time variable, and I only need to worry about the regularity in the measure variable. So, this uh, re representation formula for capital U gives you explicit estimate, which I am going to skip. It remains to show, so the main thing we want to do is uh, preservation of displacement monotonicity, and if we do that, it means we have convexity in the Q variable at, uh, every, for every time. So with uh, Mezaros, Mu, and Zhang, we show that uh, when beta is greater than zero, if G and L are displacement monotone, then later U remain displacement monotone. And uh, here is an idea of the proof. We find a path, S, so I give myself, uh, I give myself uh, mu, and I want to verify this uh, inequality. I find a path, a vector field, phi, and a mu, such that uh, the following hold. When I compute uh, the displacement monotonicity coefficient at Thai capital T, I add a specific uh, uh, positive term, which I know what it is, I integrate from time little t to time capital T, I get uh, the displacement monotonicity coefficient of u for little time. So this means that uh, I have uh, an explicit rate at which uh, displacement monotonicity dissipates. 
but I am given the terminal condition is displacement monotone. If I had this dissipation of displacement monotonicity, it means that uh, the prior condition is a displacement monotone. So we want to know how far are we from the end. Once you finish this uh, analysis of finite dimension, uh, what uh, is the new thing which is going to really save you to get a more a priori estimate? One of the main point is uh, you write a representation formula for the gradient of u with respect to mu. So to do that, you prove that a certain forward, backward, stochastic differential equation has a unique solution. You nilayanize this to write, a, to write a, a representation formula for the linearized version of that. Once you have this, you can show that uh, you have an explicit estimate of uh, u. You can show that it is W1 Lipschitz uh, in, the, in the mu variable. W1 Lipschitz mean, uh, w, mean L infinity, right? If you are, if you are bounded, uh, bounding the W1 norm of something, it means that you are bounding the, this L infinity norm. In fact, we prove this regularity property, and I am going to skip uh, three pages and uh, answer, unless people ask me questions which are on these pages, I, am, I will come back to them. Before us, Cardiologue de la Rue, Lasley, and Lyon proved that uh, if beta is uh, greater than zero, and if H is separable, meaning that you can separate the momentum and uh, the distribution variable, you have uh, a unique solution to the master equation. And uh, the monotonicity they were using was the classical monotonicity. When you try to, when you take non-separable um, Hamiltonian and you try to apply the method to the non-separable uh, Hamiltonian, you get some computation which is awful and uh, I will be rather pessimistic that uh, the uh, method uh, can uh, go through. In the case beta is zero, when H is separable, we show that uh, with uh, Mesaros, we show that uh, we have a well posedness of uh, the master equation when uh, we are working with uh, mean field game which derive from uh, potential. The idea of this, and which was originally what uh, led uh, us to study mean field game, was uh, in uh, a first paper with uh, 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 Andre. We were interested in Hamilton-Jacobi equation on the Wasserstein space. And then uh, this was a short time uh, existence result. We showed that uh, when you construct the solution of the Hamilton-Jacobi equation, you can show that there is a function little u such that uh, the Wasserstein gradient of calligraphic u and the classical gradient of little u are related by this. And uh, we check that uh, little u satisfy the master equation. This is a direction which is different from what uh, Cardiaghe, Delary, Lasley, and Lyon did. In uh, one minute, I am done. They uh, solve the master equation for beta greater than one, and they use that to prove that one can solve the Hamilton-Jacobi equation on the Wasserstein space for uh, beta greater than zero. Recently, Zhu and Zhang propose, uh, Mu and Zhang propose uh, uh, another condition for well posedness of uh, master equation. So I have uh, five more pages. <laughs> Thank you for that.
Thank you, Wilfried, for, for the nice talk. Uh, we are kind of running short of time, so maybe one quick question if there is. Yeah, okay. I'm not sure I understand why you do not want to mix a player playing deterministically with player playing stochastically. Because uh, it will be harder to write a PD, a system of PD, which will, to represent that. It, it will be very, very difficult to, to turn that into PD. I, I haven't looked at that, uh, that, but this will be my first reaction. All right, so we, we have to finish. There is a next talk coming, so let's uh, thank Wilfred again.